Have you ever listed something on eBay and then it sells like almost instantaneously? That happened to me the other day. I listed a vintage Air Jordan t-shirt and it was expensive. I listed it for $225 and it literally sold like, I think it sold like four minutes later. So pretty much like as soon as it hit the website live. I was happy, right? Because it's a good sale. But you know, like when that happens, you sort of get that sinking feeling like you sold it way too low. We've for sure done that in the past with items where we haven't done the right research and we've listed it too low and it sells immediately. And then we're like, oh man, did we miss out on some money? Still happy that you got the sale, but you get that sinking feeling. So that happened with this item and I'm sure that's probably happened to a lot of you guys out there as well. It's happened to me with uh, t-shirts for sure, but also like stuff that people are flipping onto other platforms. Like it happens to us all the time with like printer toner. And we know that people are buying that to either flip it onto Amazon or like flip it into their own store. They have their own clients or something like that. But printer toner, it happens a lot. It's happened to us on t-shirts, um, shoes like, on occasion sometimes it happens. Definitely on video games. And then also on some like VCR DVD combo units that are definitely getting shipped to Amazon. Cause you know like some of you have probably had this happen when something sells and then in the note they say, please don't include any invoices or extra packaging because it's a gift. Whenever that happens, I know that it's a drop shipper to Amazon and I wish those people would just be like, hey, I'm an Amazon drop shipper. Can you just not put any eBay stuff in this? Cause I wouldn't care. I mean, we're making money, they're making money, whatever. But yeah, I wanted to start today's video off just sharing that one with you guys. Cause I don't know, I thought it was funny. I didn't really do too much research into it. I feel like 225 is a fair price for that t-shirt. It was a size medium. On this one, I think it was literally just like a collector who's been watching. Maybe they have that keyword set because you can like save searches on eBay. So maybe they had that keyword saved on eBay. And as soon as it popped up, they were like, yes, this is the one that I've been looking for. And they snagged it up. But yeah, I thought that was funny because I'm sure that's happened to a lot of you guys as well. Um, for the rest of today's video, I thought that we could just go through some more eBay sales. So this will be like a, what sold on eBay last week or this week video. And we can just go through some more sales so you guys can see what type of items are currently selling for us in quarter four on eBay. Okay, so I've picked out a total of 14 items that have sold for us on eBay recently, and I'm gonna jump over to my computer and I'll show you all the items and how much each one of them sold for. There's a good mixture in today's What Sold video, some good shoes, some good toys, um, some electronics, a, a wide variety of different items that I'm gonna show you today. But more than that, at the end of today's video, I also wanna kind of break down the numbers for you guys. And I want you to kind of understand how we look at our business, not just from a, a single sale, but looking at things more for or the business as a whole. Because I think a lot of resellers get caught up in, I bought this for one price and I sold it for this price and this is how much money I make. But as you start to scale your business up, as you start to get more and more into wholesale buys or just more and more into buying more stuff and selling more stuff on eBay, I think it's kind of important to change your mindset a little bit from one item at a time to the overall grand scheme of things. So I'm gonna talk about that at the end of today's video, but for now, let's jump over to our eBay store and let's go through these items that sold. So the first item is this pair of the North Face men's boots. This pair sold for $41 and 23 cents. One thing that you will notice is that we have been running a sale on some of the items that have been sitting on our eBay account for a while. And we ran that sale for 25% off of the item. So this item was listed for $54.97, but it ended up selling on a sale for $41.23. And this one was just a pair of men's North Face boots, size 11, really good, nice quality boots. And like I said, they sold for $41.23 after we ran that 25% off sale. Next up is this 2015 Toyota Avalon radio. This was a wholesale deal that we did a little while back. We actually had like 17 of these units. We've sold 13 of them over the past few months. Because we only have four left, we ended up putting this one on sale as well, that 25% off. And we actually took a best offer on it. So this item ended up selling with shipping included. It sold for $295. And that's the other thing, guys. I'm gonna include the price of the item plus the shipping together in the numbers that I'm telling you. And you'll see why, again, at the end of this video when we start to talk about the overall business, you'll see why I'm including the selling price and 
the shipping together. Some things we do free shipping on, some things we charge shipping on, but at the end of the day, it is all together. This is another item that fell under that 25% off sale. This is a vintage LL Bean jacket. And this item went down to $32.23 with that 25% off sale. We left best offer on and it ended up selling for $27.72. Next up, a brand that does incredibly well for us this time of the year, American Girl. These happen to be new. We got two of them brand new in the box. We paid, I think, 50 bucks a piece for these. And they both ended up selling for full price, $124.97. Here's another vintage t-shirt. This one was also sold the same day that it was listed. So this was a very fast sale as well. Not quite as fast as that Air Jordan piece, but still a very fast sale. We had this one listed for $129.99, best offer on, and it sold for $110 with free shipping. We include measurements like this as a picture so people can see exactly what the t-shirt measures. As you can see, this one is tagged and extra large, but it actually measures a bit smaller because shirts from the 80s were smaller. So this one is from 1988. So obviously, Obviously it's going to measure a little bit less so we wouldn't want to just put extra large and then people think it's a true XL. We want to include those measurements so people know exactly what they're getting. Next up is a pair of women's UGG boots. Boots have been selling great for us this time of the year as it starts to cool down people start looking for boots. So this pair was listed for $36.99 and it ended up selling for $45 with the shipping included. So it sold for $30 plus the 15 shipping, 45 bucks shipped for this pair. Another cool vintage item. This one was sitting in the store for a little while too. I don't know why it didn't go on sale. It probably should have gone on sale, um, but it was listed for $52.97. We did have best offer on there, so that's why it sold. Took a best offer on this one of 40 bucks, which I feel is good. I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's not like a super, super rare FSU jersey. It's just a nice throwback item. And FSU isn't doing very well this year, so I'm I'm kind of surprised that it sold, but it sold for $40 with free shipping, which this was a thrift store pickup for like two bucks. So can't complain about that. Next up is a brand that sells very well for us. The brand is Dansko. These are very expensive retail. Like if you go into a department store and look at the retail prices of these shoes, sometimes they're like over a hundred dollars. So people do buy these shoes used all the time from us. And this one sold for full price, listed for $42.99 free shipping, sold for $42.99 free shipping. We had four of these Harley Quinn DC figures, figurines, collectible figures. And they've been selling for us on best offer for around 70 bucks. So we've sold three of them. We have one left and I expect the same result. I think they'll all sell for around 70 bucks. Another pair of North Face boots. These ones happen to be new. Um, this was an interesting one because we actually did have the box for these shoes, but we sold them as new without box because the box was kind of bulky. We would have had to put it inside of another box and shipping would have been more expensive. So for us, it made more sense to sell them as new without box. They still had the tags on them. So you could definitely see that they are brand new shoes. But we sold them as new without box, listed them for $124.99 plus $15 shipping. Took a best offer on this pair with the price of the item plus the shipping combined. They sold for $119, which I feel is a fair price. Could we have gotten more for them if we included the box as part of the listing? I don't know. Let us know in the comments what you think. But from what we found, when that happens, shipping price will increase like $10 to ship the box with the shoes. With an item like this, we can just put them in like a USPS shoe box and ship them out without the original box. And we were able to save a bit of money doing it that way. And like I said, they still sold for $119 shipped. So a respectable price for this pair of shoes. A brand that's often overlooked is Crocs. And you would be surprised. Some Crocs shoes sell for a decent amount of money. And this pair we had listed for $38.99, took a best offer on it for $30. But even still, like these, you, you see them at thrift stores all the time or at garage sales for like one or two bucks, or at least we do. And, and some of these things are pretty expensive. So even if you're taking two, three dollars and turn it into $30 with free shipping, you're still making a good $15 profit at the end of the day. So don't overlook stuff and think it's only worth $10. Make sure you're still looking it up and educate yourself on which models and which styles are worth more than others. Another good sale here. This was a new open box item, Sony V1633, Sony Explode speakers. They sold for full price, $67.97 with free shipping. This next item is a brand that we used to sell all the time. Now we only sell like the jackets or the higher end version of the shirt. The brand is Masters. I'll see if I can get a close up of the logo. It's like America with a golf flag stuck in it. But yeah, some of these do better than others. This was a woman's master's golf jacket. It hit that 25% off sale and we still took a best offer on it. So it actually ended up selling for $47 with shipping included. And then lastly, this is the one that we talked about earlier, the vintage Air Jordan Nike blue tag 
size medium vintage shirt. This one sold for $225 plus an additional $6 shipping. So $231 is what this t-shirt ended up selling for. Okay, so now that you guys have seen some of the sales, let's talk about my favorite part of the business, which is the numbers. I like to look at the numbers. I like to know exactly how much money the business is making or losing on some weeks because it's not all about like making as much money as we can. We obviously spend a lot of money too to make a decent amount of money as well. But as I was saying, sometimes it's good to get like a fresh perspective on how other people look at their sales figures. So that's what I wanna do here. So we're gonna take these 14 items that I just talked about as an example for the purposes of this video. So total sales from those 14 items, total gross sales comes out to $1,292. So the first thing we do is we look at the total sales. How much money did all of the items bring in before cost of goods, before shipping, before fees? What's the total? Total number that those 14 items brought in, which in this case, it's $1,292. The next thing I wanna look at is fees. Now, when we're calculating eBay fees, what I have to keep in mind is eBay fees are around 12.35%. We also get a discount for being top rated seller plus, but then we also pay some promoted listing fees as well. So we'll pay to promote our items. When those items sell under that promotion, we will have to pay an extra fee. Typically that fee is between like, three to 8% depending on the item that we're selling. So for the case of this video, when I calculate fees, I'm gonna do it at 15% of that total sales amount. So that works out to $194 in fees. So next is shipping. And remember what I was saying, sometimes we charge shipping, sometimes we don't charge shipping. The majority of the time we like to offer free shipping. And the way that we're able to do that is we cost average our shipping out across the board. So that's a question that we get a lot is how are you guys able to offer free shipping when you're shipping something from Florida to California and it costs $40 to do that. And the answer to that is we're not looking at that one transaction. We're looking at all the transactions and we're cost averaging out the shipping across everything. So when you take a look at these 14 items, some of them cost us $5 to ship, some of them cost us $15 to ship. None of these were really, really expensive to ship, but across the board, when you cost average that out, so you take all of the shipping amounts and average it out, it comes out to around $10 per item in shipping fees is what we pay. So when we sell something, it doesn't matter if it costs us $20 to ship it out or $50 to ship it out or $2 to ship it out. Out, we cost average everything out in our business. So again, instead of looking at one transaction, we're looking at the business as a whole or all the items as a whole. So going off of that at a $10 average shipping price on 14 items, 10 times 14 is $140 in shipping fees. So now if we go back and take that $1,292 and we subtract our shipping fees and our eBay fees, it leaves us with a gross profit of $958. That's a pre-tax, pre-cost of goods gross profit. Now when it comes to cost of goods, same thing. We may spend a certain amount of money on buying a lot of one things and we may spend a lot less on buying something from a thrift store. So even on our cost of goods, we still cost average that out. So if we go based based on a 40% cost of goods, which is high. We try to keep it under that, but let's do it based on a 40% cost of goods. That's $383. So if you take $958 and subtract $383, we're left with a pre-tax profit of $575. So even though everything sold for 1200, what was it, $1,292, even though everything sold for $1,292, when you whittle it down at the end of the day, we're only actually pocketing $575 pre-tax. So we still have to pay tax on that money. So again, if you take 575 and you divide that number by 14, because there were 14 sales, it gives us an average gross profit. So an average pre-tax profit of $41 per item. So now again, we're not looking at it on each individual item. We're saying we sold 14 items, we cost averaged everything out, we profit averaged everything out, and each item is generating $41 in pre-tax revenue for us. So now when you take that mindset and you start to look at it in a larger scale. Let's say we did that exact same thing with these 14 items. Let's say that we got the same profit margin, $41 per item, and we sold 50 items this week. That's a pre-tax profit of $2,050. So now all you're doing is taking your exact same model and you're scaling it up. So let's say we did the same thing and we sold 200 items this month. Now we're talking about $8,200 pre-tax profit. And if you wanna take it even larger scale, let's say that we did the same thing that we did with these 14 items, but we sold 2,500 items 
over the next 12 months. So that would be $102,500 pre-tax annual profit. So I'm sharing all this with you guys so that you can kind of understand the way that we look at things. We used to do it one item at a time. Now we do it as our business as a whole. And for us, it's actually even harder because we have multiple revenue streams coming in from different areas, not just eBay. We do eBay and Amazon and YouTube and mentoring, investments, wholesale. There's a lot of different aspects, a lot of different revenue streams coming into our business. But if you can start looking at things like that, cost averaging it out as you scale up, as you start spending money on more and more products and selling more and more products. It's actually a lot easier to keep track of things when you look at it that way. That being said, obviously you still wanna make sure you're keeping all of your receipts and all of your invoices for tax purposes. When it comes to the end of the year and you give all that information to your CPA, you wanna make sure that it is concise and you wanna make sure that you're keeping good records in case you get audited or something like that. But yeah, just a different way of looking at things. I hope that maybe like helped a few of you guys out. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video as well. Maybe you picked up some things that you can be on the lookout for as well. Do me a favor if you don't mind guys, and girls, please hit the thumbs up button on this video. It only takes a second. I'd love to see like, I don't know, a thousand thumbs ups on this video would be awesome. So please hit the thumbs up button on the video. Leave a comment that's even better because that'll help drive some traffic up on the video as well. And I do want more and more people to see this type of video breaking down the actual numbers as well. Because I don't like it when people show, you know, I made $100,000 when at the end of the day, after you break down all the numbers, they're only making like 10 grand. We want to show the reality of reselling. So $1,292, you're actually actually only making $575 pre-tax. So hopefully you appreciate me like kind of showing the reality of this. Anyway, guys and girls, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. I'm Ryan Roots. Peace out. Bye.